Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to experience the enlightening wisdom of the Supreme Master Ching Hai. Thank you, Master. Thank you, thank you. You call me master, but you are all master. <laughs> you just forget, you just forget. When we are united, when we remember the un unity of the universe, which included ourselves, then we remember that we are one, with God, one with the all-pervasive intelligence. And when we have forgotten this, then we have forgotten everything. And we try to remember that through different means, like prayers, uh, scriptures, yogas, meditation. All these are good. All these are good for us. One day, we will truly remember that we are masters. There is no one in this room or anywhere else who is not a master. Because we cannot be separated from the master who is all-pervasive, and we are in that pervasiveness, and we are one with that. And that's the only thing we are made of. There's nothing else that made of our beings except God essence, except the greatest things that we call truth, wisdom, God, Goddess, Buddha, name whatever you like to call this greatest being in the universe, which is even one with us, with every of us. That's why, that's why at the time of death, the so-called ourselves or the body just lay flat on the ground or anywhere and doesn't move because that essence of all movement, of all activities, has chosen to leave that physical instrument for that time. Maybe seeking another instrument for further experiencing the limitless, the vastness of this great being, which we call God, which is one with us, actually. Once we found the unity again with this all-pervasive intelligence, all-pervasive love, we call this enlightenment. We call this God-realization, or self-realization, of um, attaining Buddhahood. <laughs> Different countries name this intelligence, this wisdom, this greatest love by different terminology because they speak different language. Otherwise, they're just one. The oneness that encompasses all things, including ourselves. And we are never, ever separated from this oneness, even if we try. The only reason we feel separated from this oneness is because we have chosen to forget the unity so that we can re-experience again this greatness and we can recreate ourselves again through forgetfulness or remember again the bliss of heaven, of unity with God which is ourselves, our greatest self. 
That's why when we are dying, for example, many people ask me all the time, what happened when we die? I always say, I didn't die yet, so I don't know. But, <laughs> but we could experience, we could experience the, um, the feeling of death during our deepest prayers or contemplation. When we are in the deepest prayers, we will be oblivious to all the surrounding, including ourselves, and all the worries will depart from us. This is the, the time when the Indian yogi is called samadhi. Yes. During this samadhi time, we will experience oneness with God, almost like the time when we die. That's why in the Bible it is mentioned that learn to die so that you will begin to live. And a saint also say, I die daily. Whoever forsake the flesh for the spirit will find God, etc., etc. How do we forget or forsake the flesh? Every day we have so much problem of living, of survival. Every little thing that we see around us, everything we encounter during our lifetime always try to remind us that we are a physical being. We are just a mere mortal, a weak, feeble, human being, helpless in front of destiny. And how, so how can we forget this? We can. We can if we practice. We can if we know how. It is very simple. Every one of us can do this. We have children from six years old, even younger than that, five. They already experience oneness with God. They experience the phenomena, feeling of forsake, forsaking this, the flesh and unite with the Spirit, or visiting heaven while living. It's just like I'm coming to Africa to visit your beautiful country, and then tomorrow or next days, I will go back to another country or back to where my house is. It is as simple as that. We could visit heaven and go back to earth again. Not by, not by the body, but by, by our own essence of being. We call it the soul or the spirit, which is always one with God. The body is just like a, a focus point so that the soul can pay all the attention there in order to gather some earthly experience that he wants to experience, so that he can temporarily, if, if the soul is a he or a she, you know, we have to say something. Okay, she or he want to experience something in this material existence, then that soul or that part of that great beings of God has to focus on some point. Focus so much so that he can forget completely about his oneness with God. At that moment, we're born. We say we're born in the physical world and we have a body. And so long as the soul or that part of God consciousness still concentrate on this focus point of the body or whatever body he chose to focus on, we say that we say that, that, that that's a he, that's a she, that's a human being, or that's a what? Actually, that part of the soul, or we call individual soul, has never left the whole of God consciousness. So we have never been really born, or we have never to die. But we could have chosen, we could choose 
to forget completely about God, about the whole unity of ourselves, and just focus on this physical being, then we would never experience Godhood, even though God is all over us, <laughs> everywhere. But if we choose to be awakened, to remember, then we can. We can forsake our attention for a while. Don't focus on this physical being for a while. We focus back to the unity. Then we can find God. We realize that we have never left God. Then we one with God, and we are always never separated from God. So that, that is just the secret <laughs> of the universe. It's nothing much more than ourselves, our own consciousness, make choices all the time. We choose to be a human being, then we focus on a human body. So we have experience of human life, all the sorrow, the suffering, the happiness, the adventures of the flesh, the pleasures, the pain. The moment we feel we have enough of physical experience, we want to experience something different, then we choose another choice. We might choose to be a diva, or we might even choose to experience to be a flower. That's also possible. And that's why it is born the, the theory of reincarnation, of transmigration into different levels of existence. But actually, we have never gone anywhere at all. <laughs> Neither go up nor go down. We just, uh, how to say, forever flowing in the life force of the universe, forever being in God's hood, but forever experience different focus points for our own pleasure, for our own amusement. But while we are in the physical body, sometimes we have forgotten the wisdom of ourselves. Therefore, uh, we have forgotten the choice that we have made before we came here. So the choice we have made might have led us to some pain or suffering. Then now we complain. We complain so much because we don't like the suffering. The body doesn't like the suffering. The mind doesn't like the pressure. But that was what the soul wants to experience. He wants to experience pressure so that he can appreciate again the freedom in God consciousness. He wants to choose suffering so that he can enjoy thousandfold again when he enter eternal bliss once more. That's why we are here, so that we know God more, we know ourselves more. Just like we are the king of uh, ancient nation, sometimes the king disguise himself as a commoner and go among the people in order to understand what uh, true citizenship is like. <laughs> and then when he comes back, he appreciates his position better his comfortable palace, or the servants that serve him, or the power that he has. When he disguise himself, disguise himself as a commoner, he has to undergo all kind of hardship, all kind of ordinariness, just like every one of his subject. He cannot reveal himself that he's a king. In fact, he must completely cover up his identity so that he can truly, truly mer merge with the people of his nation and experience what their daily life is like. Similarly, we were once with God, I mean consciously at that time. We have never been away from God, but now we are not consciously remembering that. So we had enough of the suffering of this physical life. We had enough of the mundane experience. So we get bored. <laughs> we feel there's nothing really here anymore for us to enjoy. We would like to know where we come from. 
what else is there in this vast universe of God creation that we should experience. This is the time when we ask this question, when we wonder like this, this is the time we will experience enlightenment. We're ready. <laughs> We're ready for it. So we came all this time to be a human being, to be different human beings. Sometimes if we have focus on one, one focus point or one human existence, and we didn't feel we have enough of physical uh, enjoyment or physical adventure, then we focus on another existence of another human being again. And then we continue further until we get tired. So actually, anyone who is ready can experience God's light, God's unity and enlightenment. That is very simple like that. It's your choice only. You've chosen to forgotten to forget, and now you have chosen to remember. <laughs> so if you think you have chosen now to remember again, then uh, of course I'm here to serve you because uh, God has given me permission and uh, ordered me to do that. Uh, maybe one day, after you have remembered everything about yourself, God will also say the same to you. Go, my son, go, my daughter, uh, do some service to my children or to myself, because we have never been separated from God. Remember that. Even if you don't remember, just believe me. We have nowhere to go except inside God's consciousness. We have nowhere else except in God's house right now. Everywhere He encompasses every being in this universe. All the flowers, the sun, the moon, the star, the planets, the galaxies are all inside God. There is nothing that escapes Godhood. So even if we are not enlightened, we are all right too. <laughs> There is no hell actually to go to. For a conscious soul, there is no such thing as hell, but just a temporary passing experience that he has to go through in the course of eternity because he has chosen to experience some so-called suffering in order to grow, in order to understand happiness again. Every soul, every little part of God has chosen to walk a different path in order to experience different aspects of God. And the whole experience, experience of all humankind or all beings made up, made up the wholeness of God. Therefore, Jesus said, love thy neighbor, even love thy enemies because everyone on earth, they have chosen to play that role only. There is no enemy. Just us, just God, different focus points to make life more abundant, more variety, more different, more colorful, just like He made us even so different colors so that we can enjoy each other. Like I look like yellow cornflakes, <laughs> corn, <laughs> and you look like chocolate. <laughs> and you look like icing, you know. <laughs> Christmas icing, yes, yes, yes. Because God is colorful. <laughs> Just like He made all different flowers, different colors, even fruit from the same soil, we obtain so much, many different fruits and different flowers. They're all different colors. The African people ch chose to always wear colorful clothes <laughs> because in size, I think they feel it. They are very close to God. They are so happy. They know this is... <laughs> so 
So <coughs> there is not really anything mysterious or difficult about fighting God or fighting our true self because we has never been we have never been anything else but God. God's essence, one with God, or God children, God offspring, a spark of God, a part of God. It's just like the fish in the sea is born in the sea, it lives in the sea, and when it dies, it becomes the sea again, you know, thing like that. So we have never run anywhere. I just want to tell you the good news that I have found out, that we don't have hell to go to, we never be forever condemned in that eternal darkness or suffering. There is no such thing as eternal suffering. Because there's only eternal love. The problem with us now is that we have to change our thinking. We have to change. We have too much guilt feeling, guilty feel about everything. Feel guilty if we're successful. <laughs> People make us feel guilty if we're rich even. If God gives us some richness or successful business, people make us feel guilty. Yes. If you have a beautiful wife, people make you feel bad also sometimes. <laughs> yeah. They come around and ask you, how did you get to know this uh, beautiful woman? <laughs> or they will ask her, what did you see in that guy? Huh? <laughs> He's so ugly, <laughs> thing like that. <laughs> yeah, it's none of their business. They make you feel bad. Yes, they make you feel guilty if you have a lot of money. They make you feel guilty if you are successful in political or business. This is the thing, because they also make you feel guilty about the things you do in your bedroom with your loved ones. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> this also ridiculous. <laughs> you lock your door already. You close the curtain. They still make you feel bad in here. <laughs> okay. You're just expressing your love in different way, right? And the whole world is feeling guilty about so many things because we have been taught that way. This doctrine is never right. So Jesus has to come, Moses has to come to set us free. Set us free not just by his sacrifice, but by the teaching, telling you that God is all loving. Knock and it shall be open. Ask and it shall be given unto you. But where do you knock? <laughs> yes, we couldn't even knock anymore. We're too weak. We're burdened with guilt and fear, fear from this uh, revenge for God. There's no such thing as revenge for God. He, he is revengeful. He's like us, like you and me. War God, you know? You do something good to me or else. This is not God. Can you imagine such a God? Then we don't need to worship such a, a, a small, <laughs> minded, a narrow person. If he's really a person, if there is a God like that, we should not worry about worshiping him. Because he's just like one of any of the, I would say, power abusing people. Even in this planet, think about it. You have children, or you have wife and husband. Sometimes your wife makes mistakes, your husband stray a little. You still forgive him. You still bring, hug him, and okay, I forgive you, don't do it again. Your, your kids sometimes give you so much trouble because they're stubborn, they don't listen to you, they cause you headache. You still forgive them, you still love them, and give them the best love that the parents can afford, even money, everything, sacrifice. So how would a God, the greatest father or mother of all the universe, could be revengeful? 
could condemn you to hell just because you're human, you don't know any better, and you make mistakes sometimes. So this kind of fear has been inflicted upon us generation after generations. That's why we find ourselves too weak now to even believe in there is a God who would even answer our prayers. That's why when we pray, we, 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 we don't pray with the whole heart. We don't have conviction that our answer will be, our prayers will be answered. But it stated in the Bible, knock and it shall be opened. Ask and it shall be given. It is like that. It is truly like that about God. No matter what you did, what you do, He will always answer your prayers. We just have to listen. I'm going to show you how to listen to Him. This we have to change, our way of thinking. We have to believe from today that God is all-forgiving, all-loving. Even if you don't believe God is all-forgiving, all-loving, you believe Jesus has come here and He has sacrificed for you. And I'm going to show you that what He said is truth. I'm going to, tell, to show you that really there is a God, Godfather, Godmother, a Buddha, whomever you believe. Allah, even anyone that you call his name by all your love or your beauty or your faith, that is the God who is always loving, never, ever, ever criticize you, even for one fraction of the second. Anytime you turn to him, no matter how badly you have done in your life, he will open the door immediately. That's why we call this way immediate enlightenment, because it is immediate. And every day you can repractice again and again until you completely remember that there's only God, one thing in this life is God, and He's everywhere. And then you'll be happy. You'll be happy from the day you see His light the first day already, maybe today, if, if you trust me enough to offer this service to you. <laughs> you can have it right away. No problem. You, you, see, you will see that whatever it is stated in the Bible, it is 100% truth. Like Moses has seen God, Jesus has been one with God, so that he become, or he's always been the Son of God. But he's not the only Son of God. We are also the Son of God. God is not important. He didn't make only one Son. <laughs> he makes many. <laughs> <laughs> it just Jesus has remembered he has remembered the highest self of his connection with God he has remembered the whole things and we have not remembered that's all there were two sons of the king one has been wandering all over the land and has forgotten that he is a prince. The other stay with the father and remember that he is a prince. Both are princes, yes. No difference. One day he remember, he come back, it's the same, yes. So we are the wandering sons and daughters of God. And the moment you want to go home is right there. Everything is created by thought only. For example, now we are in the physical body, so you do not understand much of the teaching of Jesus or Buddha, because it is says that whatever, um, whatever you, you ask, your Father would give to you. Whatever you think, that means whatever you think of, whatever you wish for, will be fulfilled, but we cannot believe that because we are so prisoned by this physical shackle we call the body. So in order to experience the boundlessness, love, the boundlessness, the, the all-pervasive, unconditional, eternal love of God, we have to rise above the body. And I will show you how to do that. It's very simple. You can do that on the bus, on the airplane, in the park, anywhere. There's no condition. 
I will show you how in a minute. And I can show you deeper, different level of, of going, uh, my, forsaking the body. And for some of you, if you just want to try, <laughs> you know, just like when you go in the shop and you just try a little cheese in order to know which cheese is good, then I just give you like a few minutes. <laughs> if you want to go deeper, there are some, some things you have to know more. So it takes a couple of hours to explain to you. But the enlightenment is just seconds. The explanation takes longer. Why explanation? Because you have to do it alone at home, so you have to know everything. Yeah? So take care of yourself and be your own master. Then you don't have to call me master anymore. You call yourself master. <laughs> oh, don't even bother. We are friends. Yes. Every one of us is equal. Equal. Truly like that. So now, uh, what were we? Okay. Where did I? Where was? Oh, too many things from here. Uh, slow down, please. <laughs> it talks so fast. <laughs> My mouth is not fast enough because in the higher dimension we don't even talk. We understood each other just, 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 just like I'm speaking to myself in my head, you know. So here is it's, it's the message come through so fast. Sometimes I, I forgot. <laughs> I, I couldn't catch up. Where were I before? Did I say something else before that? Rise above the body, right? Okay, okay. The reason we do not know we are one with God and everything we wish for or remember will always be right in front of our nose is because we are shackled in this physical body. So to rise above the body, there is a way to do that. So we can even contact Jesus, contact Buddha, contact Mohammed, whomever, the past masters who has left the physical environment and enter another dimension. So in order to see them, we enter their dimension, then we see them. It's very simple, okay? I want to see African people the most. I come here. And I want to see English people. I go to England. Yes, there are some English people who come to my place sometimes, or some South African brother come to my place sometimes, but they're rare, see? If they want to see the whole African people, I come here. That's it. If we want to see the whole heaven or godhood or some celestial mention, we have to rise up to their place. And we do that by thought, deep, deep, deep thought. I show you how to garnish your power of thought in order to get out of this gate here and enter another dimension at will anytime. You, you practice and you can do that anytime, anywhere. So uh, what happened? Why the saints say that we have to learn to die so that you begin to live? Is that because if you learn to do this deep contemplation on deep thought prayers, then we can enter the dimension of the celestial being. And it's just similar to the moment of death to many, even ordinary people. You don't have to say practitioner, yogis, or anything. Ordinary people. When their conscience is clear, their life has been perfect example of goodness. When they die, they found themselves very liberated. They found themselves all pervasive, everywhere at the same time, and nowhere that they are not. And whenever they want something, that thing just come right in front of them. Whenever they think of somebody, that somebody will appear right in front of them. Or another word speak, an, in another word, they, they will project themselves immediately in front of the things that they desired or the person that they want to see. That's why when we learn to die, I mean, we leave this physical body and die temporarily, we have this kind of experience too. And then we can know exactly that really whatever we want, God granted to us, what God gave us to us. It's just in this physical body, we are so blind, deaf, and dumb to celestial blessing, to God's love, that we feel so helpless. We are the most helpless when we are in this physical body. It's like you are locked in a box and the key has been thrown away in the river. 
It's like that, so helpless. That's why we have to learn to rise above this physical prison in order to truly experience the glory of love. Then we will be so happy every day that doesn't matter where we are, doesn't matter how much we have or not have, we will be always contented, always happy. That's why Jesus did not move in the face of death. He said, Father, how much you have glorified me. He accepted the crucifixion. He did not run away. He could have. He could have any time. A man of that power and knowledge, he can do anything, but he did not want to. Why should he run away from some something that he knows can only make him feel more glorified, more happy, more liberated. Why should he feel attached to this little prison when he knows the, the, the vastness of heaven? Why should he be attached to relatives and friends of this physical dimension when he knows that he could see the Father in, in heaven and he could and he knows all of the brothers and sisters or the relatives, relatives and friends are all one with him in the end anyhow. That is true liberation. There is no freedom compared to this freedom in God realization. That is the only true freedom that we should search for. I am willing to um, serve you in any way I can if you think you're ready to make this choice again. You had enough with <laughs> this life, you want to have different choice. But nevertheless, we do not forsake this world in order to go to heaven, no. We still can have both. For example, I'm still here. <laughs> I just enjoy heaven every day, but I enjoy also this life. You see, I, I enjoy your jewelry and <laughs> your clothes <laughs> very much. <laughs> Sometimes people who are spiritual, if they choose to be successful also in this life, they can also be successful. Different masters have chosen different ways to demonstrate the love of God. Some master has chosen the way of complete uh, renunciation, like Jesus, like Buddha. But some ha master has chosen to make use of the gift of God, or God has ordained them to do this. It depends on God's will whether you should be uh, how to say, very rich materially as well as spiritually in this life, or you just be rich uh, materially and not spiritually, or just spiritually and not materially. Everyone has walked different paths, but we are walking to home, to walk God's, God's dimension. And this is what we are here for. In case you ask me what's the purpose of human being, that's what it is. And thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> if you have any more questions, I'd be pleased to answer. Then I can show you how to remember God. <laughs> you okay? I hope I made myself clear. Yes, you're so intelligent, my God. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> African people are very, very spiritual. They have very much more contact with nature, very spiritual. Any question already? Dear Master, what is the benefit of following a Master? Is it not perhaps a better prospect to be self-determined and to follow one's own path to enlightenment 
and to sort out one's own karma. What's the benefit of following the master? Is that right? <laughs> yeah. And also to, if one can sort out your own karma, or oh. if you need a master to sort out the karma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, in a way of speaking, you call me a master, but I told you already, I'm going to remind you that you are the master. And that's all there is. And the karma and all that will go away as soon as you realize that you are the master of the universe, that you are one with God. But before that, if you have not uh, completely realized this, of course, I be your friend and help you until you understand everything. And you can call me master or you follow me. You don't have to follow me because I'm not here in Africa forever. <laughs> Just follow the instruction so that every day you can uh, contemplate deeply inside and then find God. And then one day you will completely understand. You might even completely understand today. Depends on how much intense of your choice to go back to God. So you don't have to follow anybody, not even uh, any physical or celestial being, you follow yourself. I'm just showing you how, showing you some instructions so that you... Because it's not that you don't know, you have forgotten. Because you, we live in this world, we're so much uh, busy with the survivals and everything try to bury us under these worries and suffering and then make us so busy and perplex that we have forgotten. So. I have already got out of the mud. I can pull a rope and get you out and then bath you again, and you become just like me again, all clean, beautiful. Hmm? <laughs> can the convenient method of meditation offer you as much as initiation? It's the same. The yeah, Kwanin method. Can the convenient method oh, convenient show you? Method. Yeah, can it show you? Um, uh, differently, a little differently. The convenient method uh, is for convenient, yes. Some people, they cannot, uh, like for example, they cannot be vegetarian completely or they have not decided whether they should uh, go like part-time or <laughs> full-time. They just want to try a short period of time every day, yeah? So, of course, the benefit is not as great as when you go full time, yeah? So, but the convenient method will offer your own liberation in this lifetime. Whereas, if you practice uh, Kuan Yin method and get the full initiation, you could even help many other people, including your five, six, seven, nine generations to be liberated. Yes. The, the more money you earn, the, the richer you become. Huh? <laughs> How can you explain Adam and Eve? Should I explain about them? Look at yourself and you know. <laughs> Look at ourselves. <laughs> Yes. If you do not stick to being vegetarian after initiation, what happens? What happens? Then you become a meat eater again. <laughs> after initiation, how do we communicate with you if you are not here? I'm always here. I'm always here. You will see that. Sometimes you see me in your house. If you concentrate enough, yes. Besides, you can write to me. You can email, write letter. Nowadays, very convenient. But the best communication is inside because we will be reconnected again with the whole universe. So whatever uh, problem you have, the whole universe know, and of course I know because I'm also connected in a network. So whenever you ask something, you have the answer right away, okay? 
But in case you're still not sure in the beginning, you can always write to me. But the answer is always inside. Yes. There's a, there's a connection. Yeah. 24 hours telephone service, no charge. Yeah, that's a wonder of being enlightened. Because, because if the teacher, if a teacher has to be physically present every time with the disciples, then it's not convenient. It's not powerful enough. Because it doesn't matter how powerful, how strong a teacher is. He or she cannot protect the disciple 24 hours by physical presence, but by the power of the universe, which the master, she or he, is connected already. I am not myself. It's not the physical body now that will be protecting you. It is the connection with the universal power through me that will protect you. Understand? That's why everywhere you, go, you are, that power knows and protect you and answer your question. You will know, knock and it shall be opened, ask and it shall be given. Your prayers will always be answered. Your question will always be replied by inner connection. And that's the wonder of being in this enlightening ways of life. Otherwise, what's the use of having to even find a master through rivers and, and ocean again? And how long can you stay with her or him? Yes, even the master after initiation will continue to protect and guide you after the master has departed from this world. That is the meaning of being a master. Otherwise, you should not <laughs> be a master. It's a lot of work. <laughs> Will we master the art of clairvoyance with the third eye? What, what, honey? Will we master the art of clairvoyance? Oh. oh, will we master the art of clairvoyance? Oh, that's nothing. It's just a little child play. You don't aim for that. This is not the goal for you. <laughs> of course you will see things. You see everything, but you see the whole universe, not just a little thing here and there, not just your future and your past. You will master the whole life force. You will master the whole universe. That is the goal. Yeah? Do animals have karma, and is it right to give them meat? Do animals have karma? Oh. Ah. They do. If they want to eat meat, you have to give them. Otherwise, they might eat you. <laughs> I want to understand the violence. Is that it? Yes. Well, then study it. <laughs> Read it. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I know. It is difficult to understand because a lot of, uh, of stories and terminologies in there are kind of m mystical, yes? Unless we have the same level of consciousness, we find it uh, very difficult to understand. So just get enlightened, yeah? Stay around and I'll show you how to enter into the truth experience of the Bibles. Because the Bibles, many are recorded of the experience, enlightened experience of the past practitioners, spiritual practitioners. Yes? It's like, uh, for example, Jesus, when he meditated in, uh, in uh, 40 days in the desert, of course he communicated with God. Yeah. And the devil also came to him and tempt him with the power of the three worlds. You understand what the three worlds is? It's very big. This world is already big enough. If somebody come and offer you to be the king of this, this whole world, will you like it? Of course you do already. And he's offered to be king of the three worlds. Above this world, another two worlds. But that's as far as the devil can rhyme, so <laughs> he can only offer three worlds. And he say, get out of my sight. That's what Jesus say. I mean, get lost, yes. 
Yes, this kind of experience. <laughs> I'm sorry, we couldn't even see the devil even if we want to, because <laughs> we are not able to, to see with the spirit yet. So in order to understand what Jesus have experienced, even to, to say to the devil, get lost, we have to study what Jesus has teach us. Walk his way, meditate like him. Go in the closet, mean meditate, mean pray in silence, pray the properly. Let your eyes be single so that your whole body will be full of light. I will show you how to make your eyes single, how to find a single eye here so that you can see heaven. You can see the truth life, which is de 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 deceptive, de which is cheated on us because of this, all this physical appearance. We are cheated. We did not see the true life. But we can if we use the true eye. Then uh, that's, that's why I came here. <laughs> I will show you later, yes. Master, is it important to be a vegetarian, to be enlightened? It is important, it is important. Uh, because first of all, we have to practice love in order to beget love. In order to be all pervasive, loving like our fa Father, we have to love all beings. And that is the meaning behind the vegetarian diet. It's not to be healthy or not because Jesus says so or Buddha forbid. It's just we have to be love reincarnate. We have to be the walking God on this planet. We have to live like God would live. So in order to be near God, God doesn't punish us. It's just light beget like. If we want to be near to something, we have to go there, the same direction. So God created all beings and that let them die naturally. So should we. If we couldn't create, at least we do not destroy. The first commandment in the Bible is, thou shall not kill. It didn't say you shall not kill animals, uh, 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 humans only. It said thou shall not kill. <laughs> Anything killed is killed. Yes. <clears throat> What is your opinion on spiritual healers? Should or can it be done for a living, like charging clients? If it is, is it allowed? Yes, spiritual healing is very good. Very good for the patients. Not too good for the healer sometimes. <laughs> because she or he has to take on the karma of these patients, and sometimes it's very overwhelming because um, a spiritual healing is just one of the level of God consciousness, yes? If we arrive there, we can heal people. Yeah, these people are very spiritually strong in order to heal people. Spiritual healers are very strong in their spirit. But in order to, for, to, to, to heal without healing, like Jesus did, we can go a little higher, much higher, then we heal, you don't have to lay hands on people. Just like when somebody touched Jesus' garment and she just healed. And, and then she thanks him, he say, no, it's your faith that heals you. He never claimed because he knows it's the Father. And he say, it's not me who do it, it's my Father. And that is the highest level of spiritual healing. Yes, we could be in many different levels, so it depends on where you are. <laughs> the greatest spiritual healers don't heal. It, they just get healed. <laughs> if it is God's will for that person to be healed through you, uh, he just get healed. The, the master, or, for example, Jesus, he didn't do anything. Yes, that's why he never claimed credit. Yes, true master is like that. It's very humble. How do you teach your children this way of life without being ridiculed in everyday life? Yeah. I told you, people ridicule you even if you have a beautiful boyfriend uh, or wife. So why are you scared? Huh? This life has been 
led in a wrong direction for a long time. That's why we are what we are now. So if we could not change the whole world, at least we change ourselves, change our environment, change whomever we can influence. Uh, if our children want to lead to go this way, it's our duty to lead them, no matter whoever say. You have to walk the way of Jesus. People stone him, curse him, labor him, crucify him. Did he give up his way? No. So, we are Christian, we are whomever, we walk the way of God. All right? <laughs> and we have to be an example to other beings. We cannot follow them because they are erring already, they are mistaken. You must be the torchbearer, you must change. And somebody else might change also. They might not accept at first, but they come home and think about it. Oh, this way is, seems to be better. And then later they say, oh, it is definitely better. <laughs> okay, I, I follow. See? That's why we still follow Jesus now, 2,000 years later, because that's the only way to live our life. We follow, but we don't practice. We should practice more. Yes. <laughs> is God within us? Is the subconscious mind? If not, what is it exactly? Yeah, God is within us. It's a consciousness. God also without us. God's everywhere. <laughs> God is yourself. I want to feel the power of God, but I don't know how. Can you help me? I want to be strong and faithful. Yeah, only when you see God that you can be strong and faithful. You cannot believe something you don't see. I'm sorry. <laughs> I show you how to see God, then you can believe Him, all right? God is light. God is the love you will feel during the contact with Him, during your meditation, during the time that you reserve for Him. And then later, more and more, every day, every minute, you will feel His love. Even without meditation, even when you're walking, when you're driving, you will feel that you are one with that love. That's a wonderful feeling. And that's how we can believe. You see? That's how we can believe. How do you see that God is with you? And when do you feel that the Holy Spirit is with you? I feel it all the time. Mm. How do I know? How do you see? How do I see? <laughs> what I see, I cannot show. I cannot tell you, but I can show you. But you can see the same. Yeah? Because uh, what I drink, you don't know. What I drink, you cannot taste. What I eat, <laughs> you cannot feel full. But I can offer you the same meal, same f juice, then you can, you can understand, yes? God is not... I, I, I wish God is a f physical flower, I can show you. <laughs> but God also in the flowers. God is in here. You can see this is a physical manifestation of God beauty. This is a physical manifestation of God's beings, your, yours are the physical manifestation of God. So if you want to see a physical, feel the physical aspect of God, then touch your neighbor, hug him, kiss her. That is God in physical realm. But if you want to see God in, a, in, in an abstract form, in light, in splendor, in heaven, then you, I have to show you in, a, in an abstract way. You understand? There are two ways, abstract and physical. Physical, you see already. Abstract, I show you. Yeah? Later, when we have time together and sit quietly, I'll show you. I will tell you what to do and where to see God. It's very quick. Yeah? I, I, how do I know? If I love somebody, do I know? If I sit here in Africa, do I know? To know God is like that. Very, very clear. There's no mistake about it. I just can only show you by yourself, but I can show you in physical because this is a different aspect of life, okay? <sighs> yes. Master, I ask you to show us what is the right way of praying. Yes, I'll do that, I'll do that. After all the questions finished, uh, if, if there are, okay, I will offer you three kind of service. Number one is a public service. 
After all the questions is finished, you sit here with me and experience God, okay, for a while. And you continue at home if you want, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, anytime you want. The number two is a convenient method. You meditate like half an hour every day, all right? Number three is the full conscious effort <laughs> to realize God. That's initiation. So uh, you choose, okay? If you want initiation, you could leave the room right now and register yourself. That would take a couple of hours of explanation. But the enlightenment is fast, and you can experience every day the same, or higher and higher. Uh, and number two, convenient method, you can register also outside. And if you don't want these two, you just want to have a taste, then you stay here. Yeah? After I answer all the questions, if you feel that uh, this appeals to you, you stay, all right? And I show you. If you don't feel like it, then just go home. <laughs> I'm here only for the one who's ready. How different is spirituality from your method? Is God with us or a part of us? How or what will our experience be during our initiation? You see God. You see the aspect of God, which is light, which is... Uh, different like, like melodies of the universe. The way he speaks to you is not in human language. He speaks in a melodious voice, like the sound of water. It's mentioned in the Bible that he speaks like thunder, like the sound of many waters. This you will experience, and more and more, because the Bible don't record everything. You have too much experience. You can write a thousand books, never enough. So one Bible is not enough, <laughs> but at least there's some reference. Like Moses see God as big flame, yeah? St. John enter the third heaven and hear the trumpet, things like that, etc., etc. You will experience. You will know it. You will know it. This is not something we can describe in language, really. You just know it when God's presence is near or when you contact when you remember again. He's always near, just remember, yeah. The world is in a crisis today. Wars, pollution, disease, etc. Have we collectively created this crisis just so we can experience greater glory? Yeah. But we could have done better now, since we know better. It was a mistake. Now we have to, uh, I would say, re repair it. Yeah? We can't just continue making mistakes forever and say, okay, I'm creating all this so that I can experience heaven. Yes, <laughs> there's a part of creating havoc and there's a part of creating heaven, so we have to balance it. We can't continue destroying our world forever by for pollution, by cutting down forests and by warring each other. It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. We had enough suffering already. Master, what will happen when you leave this world? Will there be others to continue your lineage? Who will initiate the people? Who will be there to guide us? God, you worry too far. I'm still young and beautiful. Eh? <laughs> At that time, you will know. Yes. Okay, God will decide. God will decide whether there is someone to continue, and he will let you know. If you're ready, everything will be known to you. If you're not ready, even if a ten, a hundred master comes, it's no use, yeah? If you're ready, everything will be known to you. Don't worry, okay? <laughs> Meanwhile, get initiation while I'm still here. <laughs> The master died, but the spirit doesn't die. So you be continue to be guided until you finish the journey. Yeah? Whoever are initiated by one master will continue with that. doesn't matter if the master passed away. And the new one will come if God decides so. Yeah? <laughs> In the Bible, it is written, repent for your, from your sins then your prayers will be answered. My question is, how will God answer the prayer of a sinner? Your question is a little bit less complete than it should be. And this is the part when God talked to the people who kills a lot of animals for offering. 
So he said, who told you to kill all these she sheep and he bullocks to make offering to me? Your hands are full of blood. You should stop the killing of the innocents. Otherwise, when you pray, I will not answer. When you have, when you request, I will turn my head away. So that that is in that <laughs> section. So actually, in the Bible, it mentioned also that we should not even kill to make offering, less alone to eat. Yeah, because God created them for our pleasure, not to kill. Anyhow, if we repent, of course, that means we. Repent doesn't mean we should feel guilty about what we did. Okay, we did what we did. It's a part of the game. It's a part of our process of knowing God. So now we have created enough of, of the, the non-God actions. So now is the time to return to godly action. So once we make this decision to stop of the ungodly action and return to godly action, at that time, God gives us the answer right away, like today. Doesn't matter how many, peop how many people committed sins or whatever you did, you don't have to tell me. At the time you sit down for initiation, God will come to you, all the same. So that means if you repent your sins, mean you don't do it again, God will appear to you. He will today, if you sit down for a while later. In fact, some of you already experienced light here. Is that not so? True? Can you raise your hand if you have? Thank you very much. So, oh my God, aren't you spiritual? Thanks so much. <laughs> See, first time in, in Africa, I told you, God is indiscriminating. He loves every one of us. As soon as you, you want Him, as soon as you sincerely yearn for Him, He's there. Even you don't meditate yet, even I didn't even show you yet. See, God is all love, nothing else. Don't fear God ever. He always loves us. As long as we want Him, He comes. He loves us. He blesses us. He graces with all things in life, this and after. Should we kill insects, flies, cockroaches, fleas, etc.? Yeah, you can kill the little ones, but... <laughs> but uh, there's some little debt to pay, yeah? It's better to make your house clean. And... <laughs> and do some prevention outside the house so that they smell, they don't come near. So you don't have to actually kill them, all right? Because God doesn't punish, but your conscience feel bad when you kill something. You feel, oh my God, he's so little, so helpless, and I kill him just like that. Even though you don't feel it much, your conscience will awake at night sometime and feel something biting you, and that's the ants <laughs> or the cockroach. Come in, reminding you, maybe you shouldn't have done that. <laughs> yes. Can you explain what are dreams or dreaming? Okay. There are two kinds of dreams, or three kinds of dreams. Uh, one is a, some like a clairvoyant kind of warnings or prediction of the coming event for you. Uh, that is when you're in very deep, deep sleep and more aware of your future or the past, okay? Another kind of dream is that uh, whatever you wish in the daytime or you think of much in the daytime before you sleep, it will appear in your dream, just a leftover of the impression of the daytime. And uh, the last kind of a dream is just nonsensical, whatever, no meaning. Just collect all kind of garbage in your brain and when you sleep, it's too full, it's just like leak out. Yeah? <laughs> okay. In the Bible, we read that Abram's sons slaughtered animals for their father. Was it a sin? In the old time, people believe to make offering to God. All right? Even now, they still do that. They even uh, slaughter animal to offer to the God within their body every day. So who am I to say what? All right, Abraham's son did something, that's his business. <laughs> My business is not to slaughter any animal, okay? <laughs> Anyhow, people have different way of life, different choices to know God. They choose to do it quick, they choose to do it slow, 
right? So f that's why I say there are three kinds of offer here to you. For one, uh, those of you who like to do slow, uh, leisurely, because you have eternity anyhow, so you can just have a taste of it, a few minutes. For those of you who are a little more serious, go for convenient method. For those of you who really get fed up with this life and really want to know God, nothing else, then go get initiation, full. See? I'm not here to criticize you and tell you, you eat meat, you are sinful. No, no. I'm just reminding you of many choices that you want to make. So you decide now which choice you stay with or which choice you continue or next perfection you choose. Yeah? Next choice or stay with this choice. Okay? All right? <laughs> Jesus Christ fed 5,000 people with bread and fish. Fish is meat. What is a sin? Was that a sin? Jesus also helped fishermen get more fish. Was that a sin? No. The sin is, is we did not understand him. <laughs> he did not eat fish. He did not feed fish either. We also eat fish every day, but it's vegetarian fish. We also call it fish. We call it hamburger. Sometimes we call veggie hamburger. Sometimes we're lazy, we call it hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> we have things like chicken, we have things like steamed fish, all these are vegetarian. It tastes delicious. And if you are a non-vegetarian and the first time you taste them, it looks like a fish, it tastes like fish, you probably do not know if we tell you that if it's fish, you would believe it. If we tell you it's a hamburger, you would believe it. So Jesus was a descendant of a a clan that has been always vegetarian for thousands of years. If you want to do more research about uh, the Lord's life, you better take more time. And also he went to study in, in, in India for 13 years. That's the missing gap in the Bible that you couldn't explain. And if he studied in India, all the yogis there, the master eat vegetarian, how can he eat meat again? That's the two factors you have missed. Of course, the Bible cannot record everything for you. You have to do some research. Yeah, the, the church don't want you to be lazy and, and put everything on the table. You have to <laughs> be creative and, and, and long for, if you long to know the life of Jesus, you have to research yourself, read more books and history and facts and more new findings and all that. Yeah? Anyhow, the fishermen, Jesus recruit. He did not tell them to fish again. He said, come, I teach you how to fish men. No? Yeah, he said, put down the net, I teach you how to fish men. Okay? But since they are fishermen, Jesus used the term as a fisherman sometimes to talk to them. He said, okay, today we catch a big fish. Means I have a good person to get initiated. We say the same thing sometimes. Also, <laughs> yes, because why do I understand all this? Because I have direct teaching. If you want to understand, you also need the direct teaching. I told you I will show you how to get direct teaching from Jesus. Then you can argue with him, and he will tell you he doesn't eat fish. A poor master. Yeah, everybody tell him he did that, he did this. He tell you different, but you couldn't hear. So similarly, you remember how difficult it was for Jesus, how many people harass him and, and, and persecute him and his disciples? So they have to talk in code, yeah? So today we have a big fish, fishing time or something like that. Oh, let's go out fishing. Because <laughs> if he really need fishing, he wouldn't tell his 12 disciples, say, come, forget it, I teach you how to fish men. Now you know, okay? Okay, thanks. The Lord did not eat anything that caused suffering to other beings. He would not, yeah? He was a very humble man. He was great in spirit, but very humble and self-denial outside. He did not need fish to keep him alive. There's so much things to eat in this planet to keep yourself alive. What is your opinion about the apostles? Where is heaven? Is it part of this universe? The apostles? Yes. They were Jesus' closest disciples. 
to spread his message when he's not there. Give people initiation, explain how to meditate and all that. Yeah. And heaven is not a part of the universe. Uh, yes, heaven is our own creation, our own attitude. For example, when you're happy, you're in love, you feel you're in heaven. No matter where you are, you have a little hurt, you're happy. And when you're sad, when somebody threatens you, when you're under pressure, you live in a palace, you feel like hell. Okay? So, if we are in contact with God, every day we feel like heaven. That's why we say heaven can hear and now. Lo and behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. It's not far. Yeah. In our culture, we slaughter an animal as a sacrifice. Is this a sin? It's your way of life. You choose to live that way. If you want to, you are a God. You decide what you make of yourself. If you would like to represent yourself as a person who slaughter animal to make offering, then you do that. If one day you decide, okay, I don't want to make myself a slaughter person, then you change. <laughs> you don't slaughter anymore. You make yourself a representative of non-violence, non-killing. It's your choice. It's your choice. It's no sin in the eyes of God. It's just your choice to make yourself what you want to show it to yourself. I want to show it to the world. I want to show it to God. Yeah? You can introduce yourself as, okay, I'm an engineer. I am a priest. I am a teacher. I am a yogi. I am a vegetarian, a spiritual practitioner, or I am an animal a slaughterer. Yeah, whatever you want to. Yes, it's up to you. I'm not here to condemn anybody, just to lay out, lay out before you different choices that you could make or want to make or maybe think about making. Okay, anytime we can change our life by making different choices, that's for sure. Okay, no sin in the name of God, no sin, no. God always loves us. Whatever we do, we do is for our own experience, yes? Dear Master, should we devote our lives to serving the poor, poor or sick, or would, be, would we be interfering with their choice or karma? No, no, no. We should devote our life anytime we can and devote anything we can to help our brothers and sisters, be it spiritual, or material. Yes, we are one. If he's hungry, you are hungry. If he's thirsty, it's like you're thirsty. It should be like that. It's not, a, it's not a must. It is a feeling inside. If, for example, if, for example, if you, if you see somebody hungry and thirsty and dying, and you feel very painful as if you yourself in that situation, then you help him. That is a measurement of your love, of your level of compassion. It's not a must. It's not a, a, a precept or a, to follow. <laughs> it is a feeling in your heart. If you know you feel you should help that person, that means you have love in your heart and you should be happy. That's the only reward, that knowing that you have love. And you should do it, yes. Oh, thank you. I feel a lot of love, but trapped inside me. Can you help me spread it around the universe? You spread it. It's your love. <laughs> if you love, do something. If you love, just like if you love a boyfriend or girlfriend, tell her, tell him you love him. Do something for him. Give him flowers, hug, kiss, make love, do whatever. So the same, if you love all human beings, then do something about it. Do something you think that would let people know that your love, or shower them with your love. Do it. You know what to do. You have God inside you. Hmm? Do it honestly with your feeling. Everyone do it differently. I cannot tell you what to do, okay? As you said, there is no hell after death. What happens then to those who do not follow instructions and the scriptures of the Lord? 
What happened? They have to learn again the lesson of love. Maybe they have to learn it in a hard way, and that we call hell. Yeah? He has to go through also suffering in order to understand that the suffering is no good and that he not do it again. So in a way, he be in a hospital kind of way so that he can heal the part that he was sick. Yeah? Anyone who inflicts suffering upon someone else, he's sick somewhere in his spiritual being. So after he, he get healed, he become whole again. Yeah? So there's no hell, no sin. That's just the way people chose to live their life that leads to different consequences. That's why in the Bible it tells you, whatever you sow, so shall you reap. Yeah? Judge not so that you will not be judged. So if we don't want to sow a bad, 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 bad consequence in the future, then we have to sow a if we don't want to reap the bad consequence of the future, then we have to sow good uh, seed right now. See? That's why the Bible uh, gives you guidance like, okay, shall not kill, shall not commit uh, lie, shall not steal, things like that. Okay? And make it uh, guidance uh, to our lives so that we uh, reap the better fruit for the future. Hmm? If you have faith in God, why should we suffer and our prayers cannot be answered? Because you, you, you have to rise up to God consciousness to know this. Yeah? And then you'll be content. Even when you come back to this physical life, after you have seen how much God loves us through the spiritual knowledge, you come back to this life, you don't complain no more. You know everything, why this happened, why that happened. Everything is for our best benefit. We'll be always grateful every day. Okay. You have to know God first, yes. Yeah. How important is 10% of whatever you earn important to God? How important? How important? Yeah. It is important because you love. It's your love. It's not the 10%. It's the love that goes with it. It's the love to share whatever you have with other people who are less fortunate. That's important. When one raises above the physical body, how would it be possible to differentiate true situation from e.g. hallucination? Yes, uh, there is a way to differentiate. I will teach you at the time of initiation. But only people who, who want to go deeply into the spiritual uh, dimensions uh, should learn too much about all these things. Just the convenient people and all that is not really, because you don't meditate too long, you don't go too deep. So it's, uh, it's not uh, very uh, risky. <laughs> yeah, bigger business, more risk. <laughs> so we have to show you the way to protect yourself. Yeah? But if you just meditate 10 minutes, 20 minutes, it's, it's okay. There's nothing to bother you. Hmm? You just relax calm your mind, you do better business, sleep better, eat well. That's it. No God now and again. <laughs> There's no danger, okay? Is it necessary to attend church every Sunday so as to be reminded, or one can still remember oneself by communicating with God by heart? By heart, yeah, if you can. If you can communicate with God by heart, you can pray in the closet, the way God, the way it is stated in the Bible. Yeah? Uh, the church come after Jesus. The church is an organization that gather people who have faith in God and who want to pray together. It's similar to like our group. Every Sunday, we gather together in, in one place, it could be called a church too, but we call it a meditation center. And we meditate the whole day that day, just to remember God intensively, more than other days, because we're always busy every day. So that's the meaning of really going to the church every day, to get more communication, deep communication with our true self, with God. But if you, uh, and it's stronger, you know, when you meditate together, 
If you want to sleep, you see the neighbor is sitting straight, you feel ashamed, so you also <laughs> sit straight. That's the purpose. <laughs> and you help each other in uh, collective energy. Uh, but if you already know God, everywhere you sit is a church. <laughs> yeah? You should go to church every day inside, not just Sunday. <laughs> I want to know where is the true secret of God? And being a vegetarian, can I smoke marijuana? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Marijuana is vegetarian, right? I know what you try to say, yeah. Anyhow, <laughs> where is the true secret of God? That, that you have to find out. I will show you how to find out, but you have to find yourself, yeah? I can't explain God in the physical terms. The more I explain, the more I mislead you. Yeah, I can show you God, that's all I can do. And uh, marijuana, as far as I'm concerned, is not really necessary for your vegetarian diet. <laughs> so do not include it in there. Even though it's a vegetable, it's not a very conducive vegetable to your meditation. So please refrain from using it, all right? Um, he also wants to know if he can eat marijuana then. <laughs> <laughs> You're so hungry. Not only you want to smoke, you eat it. My God. So much vegetable and you, you, you don't have enough. I advise you to eat tofu, okay? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. You can fry spinach. It's better for you. Anything, anything that make our consciousness uh, blurred, you know, and uh, not uh, clear, this is not a God way. God's way, no need physical uh, aid, no need anything, because God is God. You can't change Him, you can't make Him come nearer, you can't, uh, you can't bring Him where you want just because of marijuana or anything else. You can only know God, that's it. And pure, simple, know God. Just concentrate, forget the world and concentrate on God's side, then you see God. I just show you how, that's it, there's no need for anything. And the vegetarian we, we eat, it's just because we just have to eat little of something to sustain this body. So do not go too deep even into too much of vegetarianism. Anything we eat to sustain the body, enough nutrition, keep our spirit alive, that's good enough already, okay? We're not here to eat. <laughs> We're here to know God, all right? Question from the same person. Am I poor because of my thinking or my belief? We are poor because of our belief. But it's too late now, okay? Our planet has been led into believing that uh, what we've been sinful and we've been punished for our sin and all that stuff and so we should live a rich life here but before this era we have a golden era have you heard about it right in the golden age right long ago okay in that age people know god believe in god because they see god they feel god's love and at that time, there was no teaching such as a vengeful, a vengeful, a revengeful God, jealous God, or there's no such teaching as hell, because everywhere was heaven. But then some bad people has invented this kind of fear so to control the population. And slowly, slowly, this fear creep into our consciousness. And we begin slowly to believe that we are sinful, we are bad, 
we couldn't know God because we are forsaken, we're born in sin, we always sin, and we, everything we do is sin, blah, 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 blah. So our consciousness has become conditioned that way. That's why we also fail in our business. We became poor, we became deprived of many comforts, including material ones. But it's a little too late now to change drastically. The whole, co the whole consciousness of the planet have been ingrained into this way of thinking. But it's not too late for you. If you're ready to change, change it today. Believe what I tell you and experience the love of God within you every day. Then you will see how your life changed. <laughs> you will know God is really love and whatever you ask for is already there. Okay? <laughs> What is the difference between your way of meditation and talking or praying in tongues? Because it is said that talking in tongues is talking to God. How true is that? Uh, both are true. Different levels of understanding about God. Yeah? Okay. In our ways, we don't talk even. We don't even talk with the mouth or the tongue. We don't use anything of the physical instrument. We go direct to heaven, enjoy the carefree life without this physical body. Yeah? And God doesn't speak to us in, that, in the human language. He does also sometimes. But we don't speak it out loud or we don't need to do anything. We just communicate. And we understand in a godly way, celestial way, which is a silent way. Yes. Dear Master, what are your hardships that you have experienced in your walks of life? Please share with me. Well, I do not consider really anything a hardship, even though in those moments I do complain. Or well, like all of us, I complain. I say, why? I don't like it. <laughs> but of course I know it is good for me. Yeah? Any hardship would strengthen our spirit and determination to find God, to let us know that as long as we still cling to this physical, ephemeral existence, we always will encounter hardship. There's no hardship in heaven. So whenever we leave this body during meditation or deep contemplation, go to heaven, we experience all bliss and beauty. beauty. And then when we come back even to this physical body, still some blessing left over so that our life become even smoother and better. So even hardship is just a blessing in disguise. Yeah, no problem. I can write a book about hardship, but why? I'd rather write a book about the blessing that I enjoy. <laughs> Dear Master, thank you for your wisdom. How would you choose a successor to continue your physical work here after you leave us? I haven't decided yet. <laughs> that is up to God to decide. When the time comes, the Lord will let me know. Yeah? And I'll let you know. Maybe. <laughs> or you have to find out yourself. Yeah? Okay, if I have one, I will write it down, okay? Name, place, date of birth, then you can identify him. He probably have a nose in the middle, two ears. <laughs> You can find him or her, whatever. But I haven't decided yet. Okay, I haven't found one yet. Sorry, you hurry up. And maybe God tell, tell you that, okay, you are the successor. <laughs> and then you tell me. Huh? <laughs> Who is the devil? Where does he come from? Where will he eventually end? Why does God not destroy this devil? Is the devil part of this oneness you are talking about? Yes. He is part of the oneness. He works for God. Wow. So that we know what's right, what's wrong. So that we know to resist temptation. So that we can improve ourselves and go nearer to God. All right? <laughs> There's no such thing as devil, actually. Just trial, just test, just training. Uh, we train ourselves. If we want to train ourselves in a hard way, we chose our way of life in a hard way before we're born, to train ourselves, to experience the things that we want to experience in order to find God 
in our way. Dear Master, Tarot cards, auras, Reiki, healing, is this bad, even if it's done for the benefit of others? No, it's not bad. I told you everything's different levels of understanding about God, yeah? The nurse is not bad, the doctor is not good, they're just working in different ways, yeah? Different jobs. But if you want to be a doctor, then you you have to stop being a nurse and study more. That's what it is, all right? <laughs> Become the healers without healing, like Jesus, yeah? Okay. How do I overcome all these problems I have and get my focus back and be forgiven for my wrongs? I would love to change my life and be a good man again. Yes, then change it. First, whatever you don't like about yourself, change it, yeah? Be, for example, you used to tell lie, now don't. Just tell the truth. You used to uh, take things from people, you stop that and you give your things instead, yeah? Or get initiation, get enlightened. Is there such a thing as bad luck or curses upon you? And when does it ever set you free? Nobody can curse you. No bad luck can harm you if you choose to walk the other way, right? Just walk the other way. Walk the way of God, then all bad lucks will leave you. But sometimes, because the karma you have already created, so the consequence still linger for a while, okay? Just bear it. We don't live here long, don't worry. Why can we not be initiated and be unrestricted? Why can we not eat meat and drink alcohol? Mm, so you want to be a flesh-eating God and drunken God? <laughs> you already are. <laughs> if you eat meat now and drink wine, you're already a drunken God and meat-eating God already every day. I thought you want to change to something different. If you don't want to change, then just stay where you are. You already are God, all right? <laughs> But if you want to change to a higher level of yourself, then have to live a little of this a lower, lower kind of uh, uh, substitutes to find a more noble, higher intoxication in the love of God and more refreshment in the flesh of Jesus. You understand? <laughs> the spiritual flesh of Jesus, yes. There are many religions, such as Christianity and traditional African religion. Which is the right religion for Africa? Also, by practicing other religions, does that um, anger our ancestors? No, no. Every religion is good for Africa, if you believe in it, all right? I'm just showing you the way to truly contact the source of your religion. There is there's only one God, and people find different ways to go to Him. It's just sometimes they get lost in the maze, so I'm here to show them where to go the shortest way. Yeah, I don't come here to change your religions, and your ancestors will never be angry with you because they will be liberated through your enlightenment, through your blessing. Thank you for coming to South Africa and bringing your love and peace to our people. I hope that your endearment is passed on to our people in South Africa. I hope so too. <laughs> Thanks so much for your love. <laughs> I think so. The, the South African people are so, so enlightened, so intelligent. I don't have any problem with you. <laughs> I think we, we understand each other perfectly, yes. It's the same person. Everything is free. Please tell us who sponsors you. Who what? Who sponsors you? Who is your sponsor? Uh, I earn my money. I des I'm a designer, don't you know? <laughs> oh, you see, we didn't bring all my creation here, but you could see some in the picture. 
I design jewelry, design clothes. I don't wear my own today, I wear yours in respect of your country. <laughs> In the Bible, it says that you must earn your, your own living by the sweat of your brow. So that's what I do. Yeah? Apart from uh, sharing with you the blessing that God has uh, permitted me to do, I have to also earn my upkeep for <laughs> the, the physical need. Yeah? I need transportation. I need a uh, car, I need airplane ticket, etc. So. So I earn the money just like you do, yeah? <laughs> and I share whatever I have with other people, yeah? Apart from what I need, I have surplus. I share with uh, other brothers and sisters. Yes. <laughs> Nobody supports me. I support people. <laughs> God supports me, yes. <laughs> when you gather together on Sundays, do you eat Holy Communion in remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ. When I go to the church on Sunday? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, I do eat the Communion bread, but uh, the one you could not see. <laughs> yes, the real flesh of Jesus. I don't cut his flesh and eat, but <laughs> I be one with him. Yeah, that's my Communion bread. I have that every day, not just Sunday. In Africa, it is said that we have a high rate of HIV AIDS. Does God curse or punish our continent with this incurable disease? How can we be saved from this disease? In every country, there are information centers about AIDS or about any disease that you happen to worry about. Yes, find out from information and take care of yourself physically. Yeah? Otherwise, if you practice spiritually also and you keep the precepts and you have vegetarian diet, you lead a spiritual life, you never have to worry about this question. Is the golden age a sign of the second coming of Jesus? What is the golden age? The golden age is uh, the time like once or long ago or many times ago when we experience once with God and everything that we wish for is fulfilled instantly. We can experience golden age right now if we have this connection with God. Every day is a golden age to the Kuan Yin practitioners. Yes. Hmm. Please explain to me properly, where do we black people come from? Because we do not exist in the Bible. Is it true that we are cursed children? Please explain this properly. What children? Cursed. No. Are you kidding? You see, you see, you see? This is a doctrine of fear, the doctrine of separation, the doctrine of condemnation and... and, and and uh, humiliation that people long ago tried to inflict upon human grace to, 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 to divide us and to row us, because united we stand, divided we fall, and they know that. And not only, yes. I once fell in love with a black man, are you kidding? <laughs> yes, actually, Oh my God, why do you ever ask this question? Should never even come up. It's just a different color, just like flowers here. Look how many colors in here. Suppose we all white or all yellow like me. Wouldn't it be boring, our planet, huh? Then I don't have South Africa to come to. I don't have a different color to look at. When I look at you, I think of chocolate, yum, yum. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite color, yeah, yes. And you know, all colors are beautiful. There's no difference, just different flowers. I don't know why this question even come up, but I know why, as I explained already. This is, a, this is a, the trap, this is the tricks 
of the bad ones, you know, who try to get power over people. Not only they try to divide us from God, make God a fearsome person or beings, is revengeful and, 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 and I would say, a punishing God, but he even, they even divide us people as a whole, as a human race. Yeah, try to tell the white people that black are bad, and try to to, to tell the dark people that the the, the how to say the, the light skinned people are evils. Yes, every every generation we've been brainwashed into thinking like this, and that's how we 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 we've been become like confused, and then we try to think again. Is it true what he said? Maybe it's true what he said. Tell me why the black people are cursed. Tell me why. One good reason why. Can you answer why? If, if you cannot answer, that means there doesn't exist the curse. What's the difference between the, the, the dark color or the light color, the yellow or, or the red? What is the difference in here? You know why you're black or you're dark? Because you're too near the sun. <laughs> Hide yourself inside the house. <laughs> no, I told you already. God is colorful one. He's artistic. He makes different fruit color. He makes different flowers color. So he makes different dogs color. He makes different elephants color. He makes different birds color. He makes different humans color. We should be happy. He's great. We are great. Yeah. Anyhow, I like chocolate, so don't, no, I don't care. <laughs> should never, ever think like this, huh? Never this question should arise in your mind. You are great. You have very, very long and deep, deep, deep spiritual tradition. What do you mean black people is not mentioned in the Bible? Huh? How about the Egyptian Cleopatra? She was black. Yeah, Moses. Yeah, the Egyptian people. Yeah, where Moses, or the, where Moses was raised, they are they are also color. They're dark color. You mean they're not mentioned in the Bible? Does you have to say dark or black in order, <laughs> in order for you to identify yourself? You are a human being. There's no black, no white, no yellow, nothing. We are God, children. Finito. <laughs> yeah, no problem at all. I don't see why. I don't any problem. I don't see why. How can you see any problem with the colors of the flowers? I don't understand this. <laughs> huh? You know what? You know what? In Holland, have you been to Holland? Any of you? Okay, some of you, right. Do you know in Holland they cultivate black tulips? Yeah? And they are the most expensive and rare because we don't have that many. See? When you don't have black, they have to create it. You see? Suppose we don't have dark people here, we have to create it genetically, uh, matching in order to get a black one. And then it will be, oh my God, he's black. Oh my God. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like the tulips, the dark tulips. It's, it's very dark tulips. It's not born like that. They match the genetic. They, they create it by scientific means. And I've seen a patch of them, beautiful, very dark and beautiful, and very rare because not the whole gardens are full of different colors. Just one little batch is black tulips, and they call the king of the night, a queen of the night, or something like that. Beautiful name. Suppose we don't have uh, dark people here or chocolate people here, then we will be missing something. You see. And then we will have to try hard in the laboratory in order to create a black baby. And then we will hold it up. Oh, look at him. Isn't he beautiful? See what I mean? So God already knows that. He created for us. So we should be very grateful, happy, and proud. Yeah? Proud to be colored.
You know how many? Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah, you do that, and I'll tell you some more. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry to talk long about this. It doesn't seem spiritual, but this problem has been too long, so it doesn't matter how long I speak, it doesn't seem long enough to erase the long-standing uh, misunderstanding of, of, of the colors of, of God creation. Yes, so I have to talk longer. Uh, what? I forgot now. What was it? Ah, okay, the color. You know how much money all the people in other countries have to spend on the beach, how much suffering they have to lay in the scorching sun in order to get the color you have. Come on, you're kidding. I also have to lay in the sun sometimes to get the color that I have now. Otherwise, I'm too pale sometimes. So you are, you are a millionaire, <laughs> a walking inborn millionaire. Only millionaire in, in America or elsewhere can have the kind of color you have because they spend a lot of time and money in the sun. You know that? You know that. So next time, don't ask me this question. Tell yourself, you're a millionaire, inborn, born millionaire. <laughs> no need, <laughs> no need to, to, to roast yourself on the beach for hours on end. It's a big suffering, you know, to get the color of the people of African. Yes. Master, I want to know, when I saw your picture, something struck me. I had the feeling of coming here to meet you. In fact, to see you physically. And when you entered the hall, I did feel like crying. Is it because I was feeling you or I was getting the fulfillment of knowing God? Could be that. <laughs> Could be that you feel uh, the God within me, that... Uh, manifesting the love for you, because uh, not that uh, he cannot manifest within you also, he could. If you have chosen the way of God, he will manifest also. See, I have chosen to walk his way, so you can feel more obviously, because I am with him. And then other people are with more with the world, more worry about the world. I am more, more about God, therefore, you can feel more God's presence in such a person. For example, maybe me. So that's why you feel happy or you feel emotional. Otherwise, we don't know each other. Why should you cry when you see me? Why should you love me and want to shake my hand or hug me? Yeah? It must be something. Yeah? As you sow, so shall you reap. Be it the world or be with God. We, when we are with the world, we manifest more worldly atmosphere, and people recognize that more. And when we are with God, we are more radiating God atmosphere, and people feel that because the God in you feel that. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Master, for coming to South Africa. We welcome you with open hands. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. And this is the end of the questions for now. Thank you, Master. Okay.